All right, moving on. The 2023 Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, has addressed the possibility of a merger between the Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party. There have been speculations of a merger ahead of the 2027 elections, and this gained traction when Atiku Abubakar, the PDP's candidate, in the last election announced on May 17th that he would support <coughs> Peter Obi if the party's merge and uh, the presidential ticket is ceded to the southeast region. In a recent interview with Noah TV Global Black TV, Peter Obi emphasized that he's only open to a coalition aimed at creating a better and more effectively governed Nigeria, rather than just focusing on electoral success or state control. Obi stressed the importance of working together, whether at the party or individual level, to unlock Nigeria's potential and build a better nation. We're joined this morning by Chief Spokesperson for Peter Obi and Director of Media, Labour Party, uh, Tanko Yunusa. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. All right. The conversation about uh, a possibility of a merger happening has been an off and on conversation floating around in the atmosphere. Are we confirming for certain that there is a strong likelihood of that happening this time? Well, um, prior to even the election in 2023, there were discussions with various uh, groups and political parties. I, I think I made this particular sort of statement in this, on this particular platform. Um, five political parties were being penciled out uh, for discussion, and unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, this political party included the SDP, PRP, ADP, uh, and then the ADC with the Labour Party. Of, unfortunately, that, that discussion did not go through because of time. But here we are again, uh, starting early and discussing. Uh, yes, there is possibility, but uh, I would regard to uh, my principal, that is uh, His Excellency Peter Gregory Obi, he has made it very clear that if we are to go into any matter, it must be based on the program. And these programs are very clear. These are basic three things that we need, which are just water, healthcare, good roads, and then education for the people, and eventually the issue of security in the country. So if we have a three or four cardinal point for a, for a discussion that can join us together, that will make more meaning than only for us to start thinking about only getting power or getting power only. And then, you know, the, the, the story behind only getting power had been a bit of abysmal performance in the last regime of the APC and even as we are going through the particular Mongols and Hyenas leadership that has already been mentioned on the country. So all of these must be clearly defined. And if it's been clearly defined for the interests of the Nigerian people, well, why not? Let's clearly define the objective of what we are going into. But imagine it could have been a very beautiful one, considering the fact that uh, these particular people have the government on their side. They have uh, stolen, pushed money on their own side. And so and challenging them will be very, very uh, uh, humongous and uh, very, very, very huge. So we need everybody to make sure that Nigeria is on the right path. Yeah. I mean, um, you've mentioned, you know, some of the, the details, you know, with which or that would define, you know, a measure that Peter Obi would like to get himself involved with. You know, it's not just to take over power. Um, but there's people who would argue, you know, that, I mean, the main goal really is to take over power. And so, um, you know, it, it, it sounds like a waste of time if you are trying to contest an election without, you know, doing all that is necessary to win the election. Um, so I want your, your response to that. And then, you know, for those who, you know, also say that you may have to, you know, shift a little bit of, on some of your ideals if you want to have a merger. Um, the mindset of the people in these other parties cannot be the same mindset of the you know, people in the Labour Party. And so if you want to have a possible measure, you cannot you know, basically expect everyone to come perfect. You would have to make some changes, make some adjustments to your expectations you know, for such a measure to be possible. What do you think? You see, there is this addict that says that uh, the, uh, when you dance, somebody may dance so roughly and then get paid for it. And somebody may dance that beautifully well and get a king around his bum bum. That's happen. But it is better for you to really go into something that you know that you have done a critical analysis of. From the past experience we have seen, many of the people who have gone into a major uh, reposition, 
did not do it on the basis of delivering, uh, you know, the, the deliverable to the to the benefit of the Nigerian people. And uh, it has turned out to be negative. So what we are saying basically is that, yes, we, there's an issue of give and take. Those give and takes usually happen when the issue of positions come in. Who become who? What is the percentage of what we are bringing in and what is coming shared to us if we are forming a government and all of those. Ones. Those are the issues of give and take. No, it's agreeable. But here, the basic thing that we're talking about is the cardinal point that will join me and you together. What are we working for? Is it only for us to get power? And when we get power, we don't know what to do with it. And at the end of it all, Nigerian people will continue to, to challenge us that we just took proper power. We didn't, we didn't plan for it. I'll just give you an example. This particular government did not plan for governance. They were only, the only issue for them was that it is my turn. I must be the one. You are turn to do what? That is the question. You must be able to define exactly what you want to achieve. If it's only for governance, it doesn't put food on the table of Nigerians. It's just like you writing it. Says, without you defining the objective of the question, the, the end of the problem, your whole thesis is a, is a waste of time. So you must define what you are interested in. As far as we are concerned, we are ready to work together with everybody and then define and then give what is possible for everybody so that all of us can work together and give the best to Nigeria. We are talking about a renewing Nigeria, a rebirth that Nigeria will, everybody will be happy about. Okay. We're thinking about. We're thinking about how to provide support for the Nigerian people. Give and take, yes, one the table, one the table discussing the issues that they are. All right. Now, should this merger happen? I mean, you have given the conditions upon which your principal will be willing to go into a merger. But should this merger happen? Would he be willing to sacrifice the, put, uh, the likelihood of being the face of this merger? Now, I ask this because in a recent interview, um, Alaji Atiku Abubakar granted to the Voice of America, he did say there that he will keep running for president as long as he's healthy, and he was reported to say that there. Now, should, should this happen where both parties have to come together, do you see that your principal, Peter, Peter Obi, will be willing to sacrifice being the face of this run of this race. I know he's run before in 2019 with um, Alaji Atiku Abubakar as his vice. Would he be willing to maybe do that again? Don't forget the same Alaji Atiku Abubakar who says that he's willing to share the sword and give uh, support to Peter Obi when the time comes that the party cedes the position to the southeast. Already at the moment now we're talking about a southern president as the case may be. So it is very, very clear. And the idea of whether His Excellency is willing to... His Excellency has always been saying that I'm not desperate to be the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm only desperate to see Nigeria work. But don't also forget that His Excellency Peter Obi, when people did not even think that he was going to win anything, he was able to resonate with the Nigerian people. No wonder the, the champion newspaper gave him the award in Lagos. Just recently, I was in Lagos to receive the award as the most impactful politicians of the year 2023. What that simply means is that he was able to communicate and sell a message, the message that makes a lot of meaning to Nigerians, especially the Nigerian youth. And that makes a lot. And then out of those particular youth, 12.5 million of them came out to register because of the messages that Peter Obi was able to send to them. In democratic setting, mostly there are messages that really make the turns of events. And that, of course, will show you the strength and capacity and quality that what His Excellency Peter Obi has. Now, if you bring that to the table, there are indices and yardsticks that will make you to select who do you think. Age is one, capacity is one, intellectual ability to deal with issues are others, and then the issue of probably rotational basis work is already obtainable uh, logically at the moment now for the unity of this country. All of these funds are already on the table. So it is clear if that particular opportunity comes, we know that a lot of give and take will happen. Uh, but we won't force anything on anybody. But His Excellency is willing to build a Nigerian nation that all of us will be happy for. And that is exactly where he stands. All right. Um, I mean, time will tell, you know, how, you know, these conversations concerning merger will take, uh, you know, how they will turn. You know, I, 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 there's just too many arguments, you know, about, you know, why bother, you know, if you're not willing to make, you know, certain adjustments here and there to accommodate those who you want a merger with. 
Um, but, you know, we're going to get back to that. But I, I want your, your quick thoughts. You know, to, tomorrow is going to be the 29th of um, May, one year after the inauguration of the current administration. There's different people who have rated them 70%, you know, 40%, you know, 90%. What would your ratings be? How well do you think they have managed Nigeria in the last one year? Look, for me, it's nothing to rate at the moment. You only rate something when there's a gas being provided that I'm going to do A, B, C, D, and then you put them together and see whether you are able to achieve that. Then you can give an indices of achievement. The truth about this is that this particular government has a problem of legitimacy issue right from the beginning. And that, of course, had made them to commit so much mistakes and then playing to the gallery, using propaganda and continuously lying to the people and which is absolutely not necessary. I'll give you an example. Uh, the government itself, when it came into power, was dealing with the issue of whether we won the election or we didn't want the election, or we had the credibility to have even stand for election in the first place or not. These are basic issues. And of course, we also know that the previous regime has removed the issue of this subsidy. This particular government did not allude to the same fact by saying that, look, this government that we're taking off with and the former government have already removed the issue of subsidy from our budget. So we are only following suit. But what they did was also announce, as if it's their own credit to them, what they thought would have been the credit ended up boomeranging. Because already at the time in which they took over power, the Nigerian people are already walloping in terms of pain and pang. What they did was they pro that particular pain and, man, uh, uh, and pang. They pro it without even caring, knowing exactly what the solution would have been. So that became a big problem. Communication is an issue. And the issue of deliverable of good dividends to the Nigerian people, democracy, the good dividends of democracy to the Nigerian people, was not respected. And at the same time, they kept on lying upon lying. You see, lies cost you a lot of things. When you lie, you'll be looking for another lie to cover up the other lie. And then here we are. Instead of solving the problems of the Nigerian people, they're only adding, adding uh, more pain. Here, let me explain. You are talking about taxation. You are taxing the people on a continuous basis as a way in which you can shower in money to the government, to the post of government. And at the same time, it's the same people that you're supposed to provide support for that you are taxing. Meanwhile, a couple of your own leaders are stealing this particular money for their own benefit. So there is a complete confusion within them, the system. So, and they are refusing to accept to that particular fact that their fundamental mistake. They only take decisions and come back and say, no, we are reverting it. After already, that particular decision they have taken has already affected the, the people negatively. And the, the people can't recover. They will only manage. It, that, that, I keep on saying that it's only in Nigeria that they are ridiculously patient. You, the, the thing that we do in this country, just one quarter of it is enough to unseat somebody. But we... Nigerians, we are resilient, and we are patient, and we we'll continue to do what we need to do. But yeah. the truth is that, honestly, this particular government have not been able to define its objective and following its suit for the interest of the people. Mark my word, interest of the people, that is first. It is only when the people are comfortably okay that they collaborate with you to develop. But when you keep on putting on pain and pain for them, they will only look for soccer somewhere else. And that, of course, has dovetailed into the issue of insecurity, a lack of education, and lack of economic investment, and lack of clear-cut policies that will help the country with a lot of understanding on the part of the people. All this right. has to be looked in. Okay. Uh, so, so permit me to interject because we're running out of time. We need to quickly wrap up the conversation. We know that plans are being made for the 2027 elections. And uh, uh, Peter Obi has been said to have been meeting with a number of people. We hear that he's met with Rabbi Kwan Kweso and the number of uh, technocrats that he's met. Would you share with us maybe some of the people he's meeting and what the plans are looking like from here on? Like I said, the last time he visited the northern part of the country where he had contact with the Almagiris, he had contact with nurses, he had contact with uh, technocrats, the youth and all. He was able to understand that there's a humongous wealth in this country that is untapped. Brilliant young boys and girls. So, and then the needs of the people become germane to him. And that was the major reason why he's reaching out to most of these leaders, because you know, each of these particular leaders have a lot of people around them who need help. 
So why don't you start thinking about how to provide this assistance and help to this particular group? That is the major reason why he's reaching out to them. Of course, you know, when you meet politicians and all, issue of how do we collaborate and merge or align and all will come up. And that is the result of what you are seeing at the moment. Now. So there are an array of people that he's meeting. And when he comes back, he will continue on that particular journey because he's now out of the country. But immediately he comes back, he's going to continue on that journey of reaching out to a lot of Nigerians who have capacity to say, okay, look, I, Peter Gregory wants to build like 50 boreholes in certain area as a short-term plan, as a short-term plan. But at the same time, we need to find a way of helping these people economically and dealing with the issue of security. What expertise do you have? I have this. You have that. Let's work together. All if right. That will, that uh, will have helped to re that all of us will be interested. Okay. We're hoping that maybe by the next time we have you join us, you share with us who are some of these people that he's meeting with, the ones he's met with, and you can you know give us further insight into how the plans for 2027 is looking like because we're already seeing that every party is bracing up. Uh, uh, Mr. Unisa, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have had you this morning.